From the far reaches of space to the darkest places on Earth, join us as we explore the haunted, the cryptid, the creepy, and more. Exposing Reality Radio presents the Spectral Wolf Pack Show, your paranormal nightmare, with your host, Alexander Bobolinsky. <laughs> What is poppin' Wolfpack? We are back for the weekly podcast every Wednesday at seven central, as you know. Uh, it's been it's been a good day already. You know, I, I made it out to uh, Caffey Cemetery earlier and did a little live stream there, uh, doing some ITC sessions. At I was trying to make contact with. Bart Thrasher, who is a uh, apparently a notorious Alabama outlaw from the 1800s, and uh, I'm gonna have to review over everything and see see what we got. But um, but yeah, we're you know it's been a good week moving into the new house. Still, uh, it seems like we'll be forever working on it because it's it's a pretty big pretty big house as you guys have seen. But um. Yeah, this weekend I will be in Virginia at the BFRO uh, Bigfoot Convention. And um, I think it's their first year, but it's going to be a fun time up in the uh, Shenandoah Valley area. So I'm really excited about that. And, uh, of course, next month we have the Post Town Meet and Greet, which if you guys want to come to that, definitely um, message Eric Connor and get get a spot in there. So I want to jump straight into who are our guest tonight because you know we only have an hour and he's an awesome guy. Uh, Seth Breedlove is an Ohio filmmaker. He has written, edited, produced, and directed shorts and features about a variety of topics, but is best known for his production company and the films they've produced under the Small Town Monsters banner. Before film, Breedlove wrote for a number of websites, newspapers, and magazines and learned some of the skills he employs as a director while working as a reporter. Breedlove has also appeared on numerous television and radio programs. In 2013, Breedlove began working on the concept for a series entitled Small Town Monsters. In general, he set out to capture true accounts from tiny communities often forgotten by, by the larger media outlets and from the era, 1960s and 1970s, of high-intensity monster encounters. These cryptid sightings and stories were perfect for a documentary production company with a history of working in the Midwest. Seth Breedlove achieved his goal with sterling results. He was able to document cryptozoology by interviewing the original witnesses and recreating, rediscovering elements of the cases at the ground level. The first chapter in his series of documentaries was the film Minerva Monster in 2015. Breedlove wrote and directed the film. He has since worked on more projects which fall under the Small Town Monsters umbrella, including Beast of Whitehall, 2016, on which he also acted as cinematographer. In 2016, Breedlove directed and edited his first full-length feature, Boggy Creek Monster, and working closely with investigator and author Lyle Blackburn. And Lyle will actually be on the show in July. Uh, I can't remember the exact day, but he'll, it'll be coming in the future. And this was rapidly followed by The Mothman of Point Pleasant in 2017 and Invasion on Chestnut Ridge in 2017. In 2018, Seth wrote and directed The Flatwoods Monster, A Legacy of Fear, and produced On the Trail of Champ, a five-episode miniseries. He is currently working on the Bray Road Beast. And now I met Seth first at uh, the Mothman Festival. And when I saw him, because I had seen some of his movies, I was kind of nervous to talk to him. But he's a super nice guy. And I'm going to bring him on right in just a sec if I can. I always mess this part up. <laughs> what the heck? Having some issues. There we go, Seth. <laughs> what, what? We had some issues. <laughs> cool, man. Edit 
podcasting, I find that every every possible technical snag you can run into, you will run into. It's so true. And this was just as simple as me pressing the speaker button on the phone. And for some reason, my phone didn't want to come on. So That's, that's how it yeah. happens. It's the, mod, it's the curse of the Mothman. <laughs> I mentioned the Mothman, and then he, he got me. Yep, he nailed it. So, uh, so you've been working on the Bray Road Beast, and you guys just released on the Trail of Champ. I, I watched the uh, the whole series as soon as the DVD came in. Man, it was awesome. Cool, cool. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, actually, my mind is we. I'm in a weird place right now because I'm editing. I was editing Bray Road really hard for uh, probably eight weeks maybe well let me think yeah probably about eight weeks and uh and then at the beginning of june my my month like went off the rails and all these trips came up and i had to do you know a couple different cons and and, uh and then we had in the middle of it i i scheduled this big shoot down in southeastern oklahoma Mm -hmm. um in a in a place called area x with a a bigfoot group and it was it was a shoot that i'm doing for the follow-up to on the trail of champ which is on the trail of bigfoot so i go down there and uh and we had a crazy experience down there like i've never experienced anything out in the woods that i couldn't explain and then i finally got to experience something i couldn't explain it was awesome but it got me into this like bigfoot mindset but mm-hmm. then i had to come back to ohio and work into like dogman mindset so it's it's been a weird like i, I like even this morning i, I woke up but I've, I've done like two straight days of basically like 20 worth of editing on on Bray Road. I've got to do something with the footage that I shot in, in Oklahoma. It was good. So I actually threw together like a sizzle reel this morning just of the episode that I shot for On the Trail of Bigfoot while I was down in southeastern Oklahoma. And uh, so yeah, the, 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 I'm, I'm, it's, it is one, it's one of the hardest things about what we do and on the time schedule, the weird you know time frame that we're doing it on is that a lot of the time while I'm working on one project, I'm, I'm also working on another one. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually it's, it's more than one or two projects, but very, very often it's t- three or four. So like currently I'm actually working on Bray Road uh, on the trail of Bigfoot. We just put out on the trail of Champ, so I was sending press releases and stuff for that. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm working on um, sort of a soft development of a, a, a huge project that – may be kicking off uh, in the next few months that I am not at liberty to announce yet. So we're we're working on a lot right now. Um, and, I, and I'm doing pre-pro on on what comes after Bray Road and Beast and um, working a little bit on producing this other movie that we've got in the works that's coming out in 2019 that I'm not directing. So there's there's a lot going on. Yeah, you. Uh, I know you stay busy. I mean, I always see you traveling and... Uh... And I've seen you at a few of the conventions that I've done too at uh, Creature Weekend and Mothman Fest. Are you going to be at Mothman Fest uh-huh. this year? Yeah, we are. We got um, Friday night. We're actually going to be hosting the kicks, the what they call their Kickstarter event, which is just like the you know opening night festivities. So we're actually going to be screening some of our movies at the State Theater, which we also did last year. So if anyone is thinking about coming. To the Mothman Festival, uh, definitely make plans in advance for Friday night and get yeah. there early. Last year, the theater was completely packed out, uh, standing room only. So, if you want to actually be able to sit uh, for the for the films, you might want to yeah get there you know half hour or whatever early. I'll definitely uh, I'll be there that night. Probably uh, we're staying at the low, so cool. You're yeah. right down the street then. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good a good time this year. Um, I wanted to ask you, you were the one who told me about the uh, what they used the theater for during the bridge collapse, right? I think so. Yeah, because I had just found that out myself. And so, it's believed that they or people say that they use that to kind of get the bodies ready for being taken away, right? Uh, 
that, they, they, yeah, from what I understand is that the, uh, you know, we have the footage in our movie, in our Mothman movie, of them actually dredged for, for cars and stuff and, and bodies. And I guess they were taking the bodies to the state theater and they would put them um, in the theater. As far as I understood it, they were left on, on the stage, but I, I don't know how, you know, the, that stage isn't very big, so I'm not sure how you're fitting 46 bodies on it but at any rate they were that's actually where the bodies were were put for uh identification and um i guess they just cranked up the air conditioner uh in in the in the state theater that night and that's that's where all those that's where all the bodies that were brought up were were left which i had never known before even even over the course of making the movie i didn't know that i didn't know that till after we had done the screening of our our film last year and someone came up to me and, and was like hey fun fact which yeah. i'm not sure that's a fun fact but <laughs> uh they they came up and told me that and i was like that's that's kind of unnerving it is well things about that town is that like it seems like no matter where you step you're on some sort of historical ground like something something important happened there yeah um with the whole you know, whether it's and... <laughs> right it's like it's it's whether it's related to the mothman or not the it's a very history driven uh town in fact i don't know that i've ever been in a town that's driven by so much history over such a large span of time. I mean, I grew up in, my mom and dad owned a uh, historical bookstore, so we traveled all over the, the country and, and went to all these towns that are sort of drenched in history, but there's something different about Point Pleasant in yeah. that it's, you know, centuries worth of that history spread out. What did you, uh, what did you think about the TNT area? Uh, I actually really like the TNT area. I've, uh, we've, we've been in there. I've been in there quite a few times after dark now. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, in fact, like we spent probably three nights out there. Um, and, and to be perfectly frank and honest with you, the, the most disturbing weird thing I ever saw in the TNT area was a naked Japanese man bathing <laughs> in a horse trough that was set up on two concrete cinder blocks over an open fire. Really? Um, and everything else just, just everything else just sort of paled in comparison. Oh my god, I, I've uh, never seen anything like that out there. <laughs> I was in there. I was in there with a Japanese film crew last year, um, and apparently part part of the show. And you can find the show on Daily Motion. I was their Mothman expert on the show, but um, the star of the show apparently his tra tradition to bathe. Um, in, in like a hot spring on each episode yeah. and they wanted us to find a hot, a hot spring there in the TNT area. And I'm like, there are no hot springs in the TNT area. Not only <laughs> are there no hot springs, but even if there were, I'm, I'm fairly certain you wouldn't want to bathe in anything, uh, that's coming out of the ground in the TNT area. Seriously. So, um, <laughs> So what these guys did is they they literally went down to the uh, the, um, the like tractor supply store and they bought a horse trough like one of those big metal horse troughs and they set up a, uh, like two cinder blocks over and they put it on a, over and over this open fire that they kind of had going the whole day and they got the water boiling and then this dude uh, stripped naked and and got in the the horse trough and and bathed. Um, wow you know, over the, over the open fire. And, and there was a weird moment where like they had myself and the rest of the guys that were there, there's probably eight of us come over and stand in front of the horse trough. And this guy got out and he pulled some sort of magic trick that involved a, a tray covering his crotch, um, that had the Mothman on it. <laughs> and, um, and it might sound like I'm making all this up, but I'm really not. This all <laughs> actually happened. And you, you can you can go if you can go on Daily Motion and try to track down this show. There are pirated copies of it out there. I'm gonna definitely uh, try to look for, for that. That sounds crazy. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome for that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask too. I think it was one of your crew members uh, had told me about the one bunker you guys went in and, and it was like more in the winter and there was like spiders all over the inside. Yeah. 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 Um, when we were there, this would have been the second time we were, no, it would have been the third.